First of all, I think it's it's a huge advantage to to love the marathon, to to kind of love the the hard parts and the easy parts of it. Now I do a mix of things. I, I commentate on major races like the Dubai Marathon, and for me, it's it's a big privilege to, if I'm not taking part in the race, to have that honor of, of telling the story to people watching at home and to kind of explain the nuances in the marathon race because there are many and for me it's it's always interesting to watch how it unfolds who is having a good run who is using different tactics to hide how difficult it is or going through those rough patches uh, and it's it's fascinating to watch so to be able to have the best seat uh, in terms of watching it and to have that honor of conveying it to people around the world I think it is, is, is very special to me and it's also a learning curve for me so I'm getting to, to stretch myself and to try and improve in a different area now. And then I also work with kids, trying to get kids involved in families into, into sport and into running. Back at home, I started in the UK and now I have the first Families on Track event starting in Monaco in February. So yeah, it's really just trying to show that running can be fun. The whole family can do it together. The kids can put the phones down for a little bit yeah. um, and just get into that healthy lifestyle mindset. I do think that the shoes have opened up uh, the event a lot. I think before there was perhaps a little bit of a, a fear perception also surrounding the marathon. And I still believe the marathon is the best event, yes, um, but it has to be respected. Uh, you can't just jump into it like you can for a 1500 meters or a 5k. Um, you need to do some planning and you need to have a, a good first experience. And you also need to learn the events uh, and learn those areas. So I think all of those make it intriguing for the young athletes coming in. And I think now with the shoes, what we're seeing is that athletes are starting to move to the marathon sooner in their career a little bit younger stage and they can also race more often in the year because the recovery is is accelerated both during and after the marathon so it's changed the the concept a, a little bit and i think it has opened it up made it more available to to more people and we're definitely seeing that impact on the mass side as well so i know the figures are looking good we're hoping for 20,000 people in the mass races here in dubai uh, and a lot of those um will have invested i think in the shoes and they will have helped them in training and help them to to stay injury free and to just enjoy their running a little bit more for me it was progressing very very gradually first of all i was just a kid who liked to, to run liked the feeling of running and then i joined an athletics club when i was nine um, and then i was racing cross country and 800 meters yeah. and then gradually i moved up the distances 1500 meters 3000 meters uh, my first championships as a senior world championships were at 3000 meters then 5000 meters then 10000 meters and then all the time slightly getting out kicked uh, on the the final laps so realizing that the marathon was the event for me where i perhaps had more more mental and psychological as well as physical advantages that I could to kind of use to my advantage. First of all, I think it's it's a huge advantage to to love the marathon, to to kind of love the the hard parts and the easy parts of it, and you need to you need to embrace that, and you need to spend as much time in the training, training the mind as we do training the body. So I think if you look at the best marathon races, uh, you look at the likes of Eliud Kipchoge, then. He has all of the techniques. His mind is, is so strong and you train your mind to be strong in training by putting it up against all of the obstacles that might come up in the race and knowing that whatever happens, you're going to be able to, to cope with that. So uh, I think it, it's enjoying that, that battle that really helps and knowing those techniques that you go to when you're in that difficult spot in the race because there is always, even for the top, top athletes, there are always difficult periods within the race where you have to concentrate, you have to focus, you have to only think about one foot in front of the other. I think uh, the, the history and the culture, um, many parts of the world we have different sports kind of high up within our, our culture. In Ethiopia and in Kenya it's, it's athletics and it's the marathon because of the likes of Haile Gebre Selassie, Paul Tagat, uh, Gerata Tulu, Gitawami, all those people who, who went before uh, and there are so many athletes coming into the system and just getting the opportunity to train hard in unspoiled conditions and really to be able to, to focus on that. There are a lot of distractions and uh, a way to do 
well and be very successful is through running. So I think when you have that number of talented athletes coming in with a history and a culture of performing well so they know what they have to do, the system knows what they have to do, then that's why we see so many come out at the top and race very, very well. We have a lot of promise in the UK scene, maybe not so much in the marathon, but certainly in the middle distance races at the moment, 800 metres, 1500 metres, both on the male and female side, we have an extremely, extremely strong team and a young team. And we're starting to see in the marathon as well, we have so many, certainly women qualified and the men are, are starting to get the qualifying times there as well. We're seeing the times improving and improving almost every time that there's a new athlete making a debut and running very well at the marathon. So it's great to see more of a kind of mentoring rather than a coaching uh, input, but just chatting, just giving advice. I think, uh, yeah, the marathon on the one hand has changed <laughs> A lot, but on the other hand, it's still the same. The same distance and the same rules apply. I think you have to accept that some some work out and and some don't. I, I tried my best, and and then injury meant that I couldn't give my best at uh, some of the Olympic marathons. But then, yeah, on the main side, I got to achieve some great things in my career, and my family are healthy and happy today. The low point is clearly uh, probably the Athens Olympics because uh, in Beijing, I knew I was hurt a long time before. Uh, and if it hadn't been for Athens, I wouldn't have tried to, to go and race. Uh, but yeah, Athens was, was the hardest because I was in good shape just before and then the injury meant that I wasn't able to, to finish the race. So it was very, very hard. The high points so many. Um, I think winning the World Cross Country in Ostend was a huge high point for me. Uh, the Commonwealth Games in Manchester European Championship and then of course setting the world record in 2003.